Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hi, everyone. This is Tammy Patzer, and I'm really excited to introduce today's guest, Desi Coster. Desi is a Trivedi healer who is committed to applying her gift of harnessing transmitting and infusing life force energy to uplift human health and wellness worldwide. Desi's lifelong mission has been to help people attain optimal health and wellness for themselves as an individual, for their career and business, for their family and community, and for the environment in which we all live. And first, I want to just say welcome, Desi. Thanks, Tammy. Lovely to be here. I always love talking with you. I love our sessions together. I I do too. And today, oh my goodness, it is so exciting. I love this topic. I even have a cat named Clarity. That's how important <laughs> today's topic is to me. And the title of this session today is Why Clarity is the Best Kept billionaire secret that's a billionaire with a b and we're going to take a deep dive with desi into clarity with that i'm going to turn it over to you desi so that you can kind of outline what we're going to talk about today Okay, well, thank you. So here's, here's something that's that, you know, like I said, is vitally important because clarity is what it, it crystallizes or encapsulates exactly what it is we want. It also encapsulates where we're going to be going and making sure that our executive team, our employees and everything are all on the same page. That's something that if we don't have that, if that's not part of the foundation of what we're doing with our company, it doesn't matter how good our systems are. It doesn't matter how good our team is. It doesn't matter really how good everything is working. If you don't have that clarity, if you don't have that focus on what it is that you want to be creating, then it's a little bit like shooting yourself in the foot. So it's really a quality. That's why I said it's the best kept secret because it's something that people don't talk about. But really, it's, it's a vital part of when we're making our plans, when we're creating what our outline of what we're going to be doing for the year, the next five years, 10 years, when we're mapping out uh, creating the roadmap of where we want our company to go. Having that clarity is vital. And that clarity is all, of course, part of our vision. It's part of the mission of the company and also relates to us. You know, if you're the CEO of your company or you're the head of the company, what's really important is to have clarity within yourself. And it starts with you. And if you have that, then that quality, of course, ripples out to everybody you touch, everybody you work with. And then, again, when you have that incredible clarity, that crystal clear knowing of where you want to be going, then it's very easy to lead. You know, if people go off track, it's very easy to course correct. Correct. But if you don't have that, if you don't have that awareness, then, of course, that's going to create problems. And what you'll have is, in fact, we were, Tammy and I were just discussing, you're going to have a situation where you've got some of your people are going this way, some of your people are going that way, and, of course, you've got opposing forces, and everybody's pulling in in different directions. And then what happens is it's a little bit about, like, uh, if you think that your company is... Um, like an amazing sailing ship or an amazing yacht that's going across the ocean. If everything is pulling in the right direction, there's going to be minimal drag. And so that, that, that ocean liner is going to be able to just to push through whatever it needs to, to get to the destination, which is, of course, the outcomes that you want. If, however, you've got people that are jumping overboard, you've got 20 different anchors being pulled in different directions, you'll have massive drag and that's going to create serious problems. That's going to pull you off course 
that is going to, you know, slow you down. And, you know, in, in the end, you might find that you're actually steering in a slightly different direction. And the, the key here is as well, if you think about, say, something like an aircraft, an aircraft, if it goes from point A to B, let's say we're flying from Los Angeles to New York, here's a prime example. If you're a millimeter off course when you start, by the time you traverse 5,000 miles, you might end up somewhere, but it's not New York because you keep on pulling off course. So same thing. This is what happens with our clarity. If we don't have that awareness, just like that map, Imagine that we are like the captain of our aircraft because that's really you as the CEO of the company. I, I was very blessed because I worked with an airline for many years. And one of the things, of course, I was very blessed. I got to sit up on the flight deck many times and both the captain and first officer have these maps as well as multiple backup systems for how they get to point A to B. Even though they've got everything working automatically on the plane itself, they have hard copy maps as well. They've got things that work out, okay, what's the, what's the, the wind factor? What's happening here? What's happening there? So they've got all of these different things that they have to take into account that are having an impact on the trajectory of that plane. So same with us. If we have that clarity, then when things start pulling us off course, okay, here's our plan. We know this is the map. We know how to get back on track. But if we don't have that level of clarity, then it's a problem. So that's, that's, that's the social piece. Oh, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I love your visuals with, with the ship and with the airplane because everybody knows that in order to navigate an airplane to get from point A to point B, you have to take a lot of things into consideration same with with a ship and in business and again the clarity even if you're a solo entrepreneur is so important because there's so many bright shiny objects out there and ideas for this and that that you could easily be pulled off course if you don't have a clear vision of where you're headed and then as you grow you do have to have clarity because you need to be able to communicate with all of these different people who have roles to play. And then if there is conflict, you have to have that clarity about, well, how do you handle X if, if something happens? Or what if this person is no longer on board? What happens to the role that they used to play? So you work a lot with um, different companies and their corporate wellness programs and different things like that. So can you talk a little bit or maybe give some examples of um, some more things that companies can do with people um, as they define um, their corporate wellness programs, for example, about, because I know that's a, to me, um, I think that's a very interesting uh, thing that companies need to think about is keeping their people healthy mentally and physically in order to be productive and to keep moving that airplane forward or the, or the business forward. Yeah. So, Corporate wellness, for me, it encapsulates a number of things. Again, it's looking at who's the leader, who's the head of the company, and then, of course, all the people within the company itself. And you need to look at your physical health. You need to look at mental health, emotional health, um, and, and spiritual health, because that's all part of who you are. And... It's one thing to say, well, I want everybody else to be or show up a particular way, but you have to do that as well. You have to be the example. So one of the things is to make sure that you are always at a place where you are aligned with the values of your company. You are always on track. You don't get pulled off emotionally by being attached to certain outcomes or how people behave and that you have 
protocols, procedures and things in place, and this is all part of your plan and mapping things out, of, like I mentioned on an aircraft, when I flew, we had multiple manual backups. If A happens, we go to strategy B. If B happens, we go to strategy C. So that you know if your team is not responding in a particular way. Let's say productivity goes down by 20% and you're noticing that revenue drops. So that, you know, by being in touch with your numbers, that's vitally important too. You have to keep track of everything. And then if you start seeing some issues, then it's time to start looking what's going on. What's happening? What's going on with my people? Um, it's important to always have communication because it doesn't matter if it's, you know, from the janitor to the CEO. It, each person has got vital information. Everybody contributes. They're all part of your team. So if you have got your finger on the pulse of what's going on, then you can tap into what's happening and then make the corrections as you need to. The other thing is, Corporate wellness is making sure that everybody is, again, like I said, pulling, pulling in the same line. And if you're finding that you have people on your team that are having issues, then it's time for you to look at what do you do about this? What's your strategy for dealing with this? So do you have you know, coaching? Do you have a corporate wellness program in place? Uh, do you have mentoring in place? Do you have incentives, reward systems? You know, what, what are you doing to really incentivize the people that are doing really well? Because these are the people that are, are leading your, your company and your business. And, and for them, if they're doing a great job, why not incentivize and reward them? Then you might have people that are really dragging and they're creating, they're creating a, a, a bottleneck or a block in productivity. And they might be just disrupting other key people so what are you doing with that and again you know what are your what do you have in place and then you know, you know you might have trainings because you might be updating your systems you might be finding the way you do things is changing because you know it might be that you've discovered uh, a different a different tack and a far more effective and efficient means to get the outcomes you want. So that might mean you you do some different training for everybody and then you've got to implement that, put that in place, make sure you have the right people. And that, that of course, supports everything. And then the other thing is, like I mentioned about connecting with your people, connecting with your employees, have a conversation. What's going on with them and in their life? If you don't do that, you know, you might find that you might have a member, they might have a wife that's got cancer, or they might have a child that has some kind of issue, or they may have been suicidal, or you might find that they've just gone to the doctor and they've got a heart condition. So if you're not willing to interact and find out and be caring about your team, that's something that's really important as well. So follow up connecting, having trainings, having your finger of the pulse, really having that personal touch, being caring. Um, you know, if you look at somebody who's massively successful, somebody like Richard Branson, he talks to everybody. Everybody loves him. And his key thing about having a company is he really values his people. People for him are the greatest asset in his company. So if you have the same thing, if you treat your employees, your executive team as assets, and they really, they, they're all pulling in the same direction, then you find that you get an outcome greater than if you were just all, you know, part of your team are working in, in different ways. So you've probably heard that expression, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. This is the same thing here. If you are really caring about what's going on and are always in touch with what's happening, then first of all, people will be loyal. They will respect you. They will really care about you and, and support you no matter what. And when you have loyal employees like that, 
really nowadays it's a rarity, but to have people that just love you and they want, they'll do anything for you. Oh my goodness. They're like diamonds. So there, there are some of the things and that way, you know, you, you have the corporate culture, the culture of your company, you're creating win-wins. You're creating something that everybody is, they're enthusiastic. They love coming to work. They want to be part of the team. They want to make the whole thing succeed. So that really is, that is something that really pulls you forward. Um, you asked about corporate wellness. One of the, one of the other things that that, uh, you know, I, that I speak about to clients is of course doing a corporate wellness program, such as what I offer people, which is where we, we schedule the blessings for, uh, it can be the entire team. It can be the entire company. It can be just the CEO. But what this does is it connects everybody. It really starts creating that cohesiveness as a team. And again, if you've got cohesion in your team, in your company, that's priceless. Because again, everybody's pulling in the same direction. When, when you've got everybody uh, really being infused with this energy, it boosts their health and wellness. So physically, they're stronger, they're healthier, they're, their thinking is clearer they get more clarity. The way they operate both physically, mentally, and emotionally gets boosted to a higher level. They're more creative. You know, again, creativity is something that's, it's, it's something that you, you can't buy. I mean, I know people do purchase creative people, but if you've got that, that creativity and spark, it creates such a hum in your company that it's, it's, it's like it's cooking, it's live. And that, again, that can come up with some ideas and long-term projects that, you know, perhaps you hadn't thought of before. And it might even, you know, um, come up with some sub companies or some other areas that you want to branch out into over the next several years. And again, look at somebody like Jeff Bezos with Amazon. You know, he looked at conventional business, the bricks and mortar business and came up with this idea, well, what if we did it slightly differently? And from that, that's where Amazon was born. And then there was the idea, well, what if they don't have to come to us? What if we could ship them things? You know, and it started from humble beginnings and shipping books, but my goodness, look at it now. It's one of the largest companies in the world because somebody decided to be creative, look at a different way of doing business. And again, when you have that clarity, when you have the ability to have a vision that is far reaching, then you're able to start seeing things that perhaps you couldn't see before. The beauty again of this energy is it gives us a heightened perspective. If you think, you know, if, if you're operating, let's say close to the ground at ground zero, you can only see things at that level. But imagine if you now are elevated to a 100-foot perspective or you get elevated to a 10,000 or 20,000 or a 40,000-foot perspective. Now you just like being in a plane. You know, you're up at 40,000 feet. Wow. You can really see a lot more. And the beauty of that is because you have a much higher perspective, you're also able to see things before they come to you. So the right opportunities, things that perhaps would be looming on the horizon that if you were at ground zero, you'd never see it. You'd completely miss it. Or if you were focused on some tiny little minutia. The other thing is, if there is some type of challenge or problem or issue, again, you can see it before it arises. It may mean that you, you, know, you might have to deal with the bumps. It's, it's, so again, turbulence. The thing is, when you fly an aircraft, turbulence, we've all been on, I'm, I'm sure all of you have been on an aircraft and you've all experienced turbulence. Have you, Tammy, have you been on a plane and? Yeah, I'm where you, <laughs> you, you know, that's right. Turbulence is, turbulence is part of 
your trajectory. It's going to happen. It doesn't matter how brilliant a captain or how brilliant a navigator. There are sometimes unforeseen circumstances that you cannot account for. But the thing is, having all those instruments, you can go, oh, okay, there is turbulence. There's even things like clear air turbulence. You can't see it, but it hits. So the thing is, if you have that in your awareness, then you can avert danger before it arises or mitigate the amount of damage. And that way you've always got in your plan what some of the things that you need to do. So again, you've got backups. All right, if we hit the clear air turbulence, if we're going to hit some type of uh, issue or problem, then this is how we're going to help. So, so clarity is something, I mean, you've talked about it in such clear, very clear way. This is something that I think is interesting, um, related to productivity. And, and I know that you have a lot of insight into how do you, you know, move through this because being clear, like you said, a business is a living thing, you know, just because it's, you know, you might have a clear picture of what it's going to be. You never know, you know, you could get an influx of new business all of a sudden, or you might lose a client. I mean, you know, you have ups and downs, you have turbulence. Yes. So you have some good ideas about how to stay productive while you're um, being clear and having this clarity. So can you share some of that? So again, productivity, you have to, this is where you're always monitoring your activities or the activities of your team. If you are not, if you are not watching what's going on, if you're not able to track, tracking is, again, in any business, tracking is vital. So you get to see what type of activities are productive. How do you know they're productive? They're giving you the outcome that you're wanting or they're hitting a specific target. If they're not, then again, you're by looking at the outcome at the end of the week, have you got outcome A or have you got something else? And by tracking, what did everybody do? And it might be related to calls or a specific type of marketing or a specific campaign, or it might be something else. But what is everybody doing? What, what are all the pieces? And how are you tracking everything to see what the outcomes are? And then obviously what you want to keep doing is you want to replicate that which gives you the best outcomes. And if things are not giving you the best outcomes, obviously don't replicate it. You know, if you're getting zero outcome or you're getting minimal outcome, there's no point in repl replicating something that's not going to propel you forward. Um, sometimes business practices, for example, uh, I worked with an amazing woman many years ago and she was even looking, she'd go into companies and she would look at how people would, would literally go from point A a to B or A to Z in every single thing they did in how to complete a task. Because, you know, is it, is it best to complete a single task at a time? Let's say it's got multiple levels to do it. So imagine you've got a conveyor belt of things. So you might have a, 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 a number, you might have 10 different steps that are part of that entire task. So is it best to do that or is it to do, do you do a go task A, jump to task B, C, and you're, you're jumping across multiple tasks? One of the things that they found, uh, you know, with, with what she found was if, if people were jumping here and there, it actually seemed to slow the outcome down. So what you can do is if you've got a series of tasks that need to be done or people in your team, Again, track. Do you get a better outcome if people complete the series first, then jump to the next piece? Or do you have, do you have better results if you are going across? 
several different tasks. And again, every company is different. They all need to do different things. One of the things that I've noticed um, with some of the companies I've worked with is if, if they've got several different groups all working together, if group one hasn't completed what they've done, group two can't start. Neither can group three. So you get this bogging down or slowing down and then, then everybody gets slowed down. So the key here is looking at how do you streamline because streamlining is, again, it's key. So look at what outcome you're getting, track everything, streamline things as much as possible because that will give you a better outcome. If you're streamlining, you get things done quicker and quick must also mean effective. It's done correctly without a lot of mistakes. Because if you've got something done quickly, but there's 20 mistakes or 20 errors, the onus is on you because you have to go back. You can't produce some product to a client and go, oh, sorry, there's three errors in this. That's not going to cut it. So we've got to look at efficiency, effectiveness, speed, as well as making sure that everything is streamlined because ultimately it's got to be, this is again the clarity, you've got to get the best outcome possible. So, you know, we want to look at smooth streamlining. Again, we want to have the outcome and that's where we get the clarity. Clarity also includes what is the outcome, what's the time frame, what is it that our client or clients want and or need, and are you giving them that requirement? Are you giving them what they need within that targeted time frame? So that's you know that's that that's something uh, you know as far as as far as what you're doing, and if what your strategy is not as effective, then you can start looking at things like where can you outsource some of what you're doing in that series of tasks? Because if you're relying on what you or your team does, but you could have you know, a VA team or you could have some other team that are doing multiple steps, they could be doing it in the middle of the night, getting it all done for you. So when you come in in the morning, it's like, you can just run through what you need to do. That makes sense. And providing that they're reliable, providing that they get everything done, you know, you, then that's, that's just smart business. So always be looking at, you know, what, what else can I do? How else can this be done? Can I bring in, can I outsource other, you know, other, other parts of my business or certain components of what I want to produce? so that I can, you know, have a better result. I think that's a, a really um, good explanation. And the synergism that is created when you, you know, think in a very clear way and just think about just the productivity. If, if you can actually have a clear path for other people to follow and like you said, you can make things so much easier for yourself. And I just wanted to point out to everyone that on your DesiCoster.com site, you actually have a blog where you outline and have a lot of questions ready to go. So I want to tell everybody, make sure that you go to Desi's website, DesiCoster.com, and read Why Clarity is the Best Kept Billionaire Secret because she actually outlines a bunch of questions that you can ask yourself. And that way you could apply it to whatever issue you're trying to get answers to. So mm -hmm. she has a very good blog there that just outlines all these questions that you can ask yourself so that you can get clear. And again, I think you can't emphasize it enough about the importance of clarity not only for yourself, but for all of the people who work with you. And even when you're working with clients, the more clear you are on how you can help someone, the, the better. So Desi, if somebody wants to work with you, how would you suggest that they contact you? 
Sure. So they can, uh, you know, they can go to my website, take a look. Uh, they can contact me directly by phone. So the number is 707-702-3394. They can email me, desi at desicosta.com. They're probably the best ways, um, you know, and you can, you can always shoot me off an email, say, this is what's going in my company. The, the corporate wellness programs, I tailor it directly to your needs the needs of your company, the people within the company. The other, you know, one of the areas we also look at is, you know, what's going going on emotionally for people. Because one of the things I, I find is you you might have, you know, everything laid out and everything's going great and you've got people dragging their heels. You've got people that, you know, they don't want to show up or whatever might be going on. So we need to look at, you know, what are their goals? Are they aligned with you? What's happening in their life? And that, again, if we cannot create that cohesiveness, if we can't create everybody working as a, a team, then again, what's your strategy? Do you want people like that in your company? Quite frankly, it should be a no. Nobody should ever want somebody like that in your company. And then what's your, what's your strategy for getting rid of them? Because that's, you know, they're like the anchors that are dragging you. And that person might be you. That person might not just be your employees. It might be you. So where are you procrastinating? Where are you kind of saying, oh, you know, you, your team might be saying, we need this from you. And you might be giving them excuses. That's not going to cut it. That is absolutely not going to cut it. So this is where, you know, you might need to show up and then, then looking at, okay, how do I show up better? And, uh, you know, what might be coming up for you that's, that's creating this? And we need to, you know, one of the things I mentioned, when it comes to your action, when it comes to your tasks or activities, you need to look at what makes it most efficient on the basis of time doing activities that you love, that you're passionate about. Again, if this is your company and this is something that you love, focus on what you love doing because then it's not work. I mean, I don't know, again, Tammy, for you, but, you know, when I'm doing what I love, I don't even feel like I'm working. I can work for 10 hours, 15, 16 hours. I don't even notice I'm working because I'm loving what I'm doing. Um, you need to be looking at your actions, your activities on the basis of, increase in your revenue. So what are the specific things that will help your company do that? What are some of the things that are going to help reduce your costs? Because there might be some things you're doing now that are really, you know, they're, they're inflating what your overheads are. So you need to be thinking about, well, how do I minimize this? So again, you don't have to work quite so hard. Um, how can you increase the value of your business? So these are some other things because there might be some things that you can do that, that help make your company more valuable in the marketplace. And that can be the difference of being, you know, a, a $20 million company and a $40 million company, uh, a $500,000 company and a $3 million company. And that, that's the thing. If you all, again, have your finger on the pulse and seeing, well, what is going on in the marketplace? What are my competitors doing? What, what seems to be the trend? You know, what's been happening in the last five years, 10 years? Where is my area of business? It looks like it's moving towards. And how could I really capture that area of the marketplace? Or how could I come up with something that nobody else is really quite doing right now? So that's something else. And then you want to always be looking at how you can grow and or replicate your business. Because again, by doing that, you're increasing the worth of your company. And these, these are important things. So in that blog, like, like you said, Tammy, there are some certain questions that you can ask yourself and then see if you're aligned with that. And then, you know, we can work together to help, you know, make that outcome happen. Well, I think that's really interesting because everything that you're talking about, again, it doesn't matter if you're a solopreneur, um, have one employee, no employees, or have, have you know hundreds or thousands of employees, that clarity from you as the leader mm -hmm. is so important. And I think often people, they don't realize that they do need to look ahead and have, have a vision 
about you know how things are and and all of your points efficiency in terms of time your passion and i i agree with you because when i'm doing something that i enjoy the day just flies and all of a sudden yes. you know, I'll, I'll look outside and it'll be dark and i'm like <laughs> oh and i and or, or i'll look down and i'm still in my pajamas <laughs> I, I just started and i just started working and yeah. that happens and i know quite a few people when, when that happens but that does show that you have this love and then of course this increase your revenue, reduce costs. It, it just makes perfect sense. Yeah. And then of course, if you're planning on, you do have to look at the, the exit strategy because, yes. because if you know where you're going, believe me, when you hit those bumps, it's a lot easier to hang on and yes. know that, that those turbulence are going to pass and, you know, to just keep, going forward because I know in my own business I had a vision and you know over 10 years believe me that there you know there were a lot of ups and downs and then one day it was as if a faucet turned on and and things started to flow because I had had a vision about what it could be and and of course I have to think bigger now Yes. And I think that's the biggest mistake most of us um, make is we don't think big enough. And, and you're talking about the energy, the life force energy, and how that helps everyone yes. to not only grow individually, but when you apply that at that company level and everybody's kind of in flow, it, it is really amazing how how a company could grow like and you use the example of Amazon and um, Virgin Airlines and it's funny because I can see their company names more so than the than the men but the truth is is your two examples are examples of two individuals who had a vision and then they continue to grow that vision and I think you're right on target when you say people when you view them as as the assets that they are and and you love them and they love you i have been in that situation where i my employees loved me so much that they did they worked for me for nothing yeah. to help me make a transition because they cared about me um, because I'd always done the right thing toward them. So I know about that loyalty because they didn't have to do that. They could have just said, but no money, see ya. But instead they stuck with me even though I couldn't pay them. So, uh, you know, I know what that's like to have people really love you to the point where, where they will sacrifice for you in order to help you because they could see that my vision and that I had this clear picture of what was going to happen. So, yes. you know, luckily everything did turn out and, you know, that loyalty was rewarded, I guess is a good way to put it. Yeah. And so everyone, again, it's DesiCoster.com. She has a ton of really good information on her website and Desi's blogs just let me tell you a little bit Desi's blogs are they're more than just a blog that I don't know how to describe it but Desi always delivers solid high quality actionable that's what it is actionable content and that's why I always enjoy talking to you so much because no matter what our topic, you know, we could be talking about health issues or corporate wellness or business, you always come up with actionable items that someone can, if they read your blog, they could go, oh, A, B, C, and take action and have a result. And, and having a result is far more important than the activity 
because it's always about, well, what do you get at the end? And what's, what's the outcome? If so the outcome, is the outcome when you go to DesiCoster.com is you're going to find real actionable mm -hmm. content that can make a difference in your life and in your business just by the fact that you went to DesiCoster.com and read something. So mm -hmm. Desi, um, yeah. I appreciate the fact that you always deliver on a consistent, high quality basis with everything you do. And, and again, I can't say that about everyone I meet, but you are someone <laughs> where I can honestly say you, you. you work very hard at being consistent and providing high quality. So I just want to recognize that in you today. Thank you. And, you know, I, I, I'm very passionate about working with people. And, and the thing is, I want other people to be successful. And it could be just one little key thing, that, that one step, that one piece, that when you incorporate it, it can, you know, it can, it can be like you were saying, you worked, you worked, you did everything for 10 years and all of a sudden, avalanche, you know, it was like it, you, you hit that, that tipping point that Malcolm Gladwell talks about, where it's like, oh my goodness, hang on everybody, we're, we're off. You know, and so <laughs> when that hits, oh my goodness, it's just, you got to go for it. Um, but but that's, that's the most important thing is as long as you incorporate and, and always be focused on the outcome, it doesn't matter what the journey is like on the way to get there. Yes, there are going to be bumps. That, that's, that's part of life. But again, having that, that focus on the outcome, incorporating whatever the action steps are that if you're not doing, it's like, oh, yeah, I could do this. And then tracking it. When you do that, you will definitely get the outcomes you're looking for. Yep. Well, with that, that is exceptionally good advice. So thank you so much, Desi. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, thanks for having me again, Tammy. Everyone, this is Tammy Pantzer. Go make it a beautiful day. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.